Don't you just hate people that are always on their phone all the time? Well, too bad for you. We're creating a chat app in this video and it's going to be absolutely amazing. Before we get started, here's the final product that we're going to be creating. Uh, we can go down here, we can send a message. Let's say, for example, hi. On our screen, it'll say you said hi. And on anyone else's screen, it's going to say that person's name and then the message hi. We can send a message back. And again, you'll see it says you said hi on the screen that sent it. And on everyone else's screen, it's going to say that person's name and then the message that they sent. And to do this, we're using a really amazing library called socket.io, which allows you to use WebSockets, which allow real-time communication from the browser to the server, as well as everybody else's browsers that are connected to that server. So let's get started creating this now. To get started, I just have a really basic index.html page with a few really basic styles that give us the styles we see over here on the right. I'm not going to cover these styles directly because they're really basic and you should style this better than this application. And the first thing that we want to do is set up our HTML because it's going to be the easiest part of the application. As you can see, we want a container to put all of our messages, as well as an input box and a send button for our information. So let's do that. We're going to create a div, which is going to have an ID here, which is going to just be message container. We'll be able to reference this later in our JavaScript, and all of our messages that get sent are going to be added inside this div using JavaScript. Next, we're going to have the form that submits to our server. We're going to give this here an ID of send container. And then inside of that, we're just going to have an input, which is going to be our text field. So we'll give it a type here, equal to text. And then after that, we're going to give this an ID of message input. And this is just so we can again access this in our JavaScript and actually get the value from the input that we type in here. And then finally, we need a submit button. So we're just going to have a button, which is going to have the type of submit. And we're also going to give it here an ID of send button. And lastly, inside of here, we're just going to put the text send. And there we go, that's all the HTML we need. And if we refresh these pages over here, after we click the go live button, we should see that we just have a blank HTML page here with our container, as well as our input on both of these pages that we can use. And when we click send, obviously it'll send that information. Now, in order to make this a real-time chat app, we need to install a few dependencies. So to get started, we wanna just do npm init, and this is going to set up our file, our project to be using npm, there we go. And then what we want to do is we just want to install some dependencies. So we're going to first install socket.io. This is going to be our real-time web socket communication. And then we're going to install nodemon so we can do npm i. And this one we want to be a dev dependency. So we make sure we put save dev, spell that correctly, and we type out nodemon. And nodemon is going to allow our server to automatically refresh itself every time we make a change so we don't have to cancel our server and restart our server. Now, instead of our package.json, as soon as that finishes up, we can actually create a script here that we're going to use to start our server. And we're just gonna call this dev start. And all we wanna do is run nodemon, and we wanna run it on our server file. So we'll call server.js is going to be our server file name. Now with that out of the way, let's actually create that server.js. And there we go. And now if we run npm run dev start, that's gonna run nodemon on our server.js file. And as you can see, that worked just fine. Now to create our server using socket.io is actually really easy. We can just include our socket.io. So we're gonna say const io is going to be equal to require socket.io. And in order to actually create a server, all we do is pass the port that we want our server to run on to this socket.io require as a function. And this is going to create a server for us on that port 3000. Then what we can do is we can just use our io. We can say io.on connection. And what this is going to do is every time a user loads up our website, it's going to call this function. And it's going to give each one of these users their own socket. And what we can do with this socket is send a message down to the user. So we can just say socket.emit, and we can put whatever we want inside of this. This is going to be the event name. We're just going to call this chat message. And then we pass the parameters or data that we want. And this data can be whatever you want it to be. In our case, we're just going to make it a string called hello world. So now every time someone connects to our server, we're sending a message down to the client with this event chat message, and it's going to say hello world inside of it. Now you notice we have an error. We need to have this function inside of here. So just move that parenthesis around to the correct place, save it, and everything will be deep green down here. And now let's create a separate file here, which is going to be script.js. This is going to be where all of our client side JavaScript is going to go. And the nice thing about using socket.io in this way, where we set it up on port 3000, and we have our server being run on port 5500 for our client, is that our client and server are completely separated from each other, and we don't have to worry about them being intermingled together. They're completely separate entities. You could host them two different places if you really wanted to, and they would still be able to communicate just fine. 
So what we need to do inside of the script.js is we need to get the socket variable. And to do that, we can just say const socket. And we want to set that equal to IO and the location of where we're hosting our socket. And this is just going to be at HTTP colon backslash backslash localhost 3000. And this is where our server is hosting our socket.js application. Next, what we want to do is we want to say socket dot on and we remember used our message of chat message this is our event name so whenever we receive an event we want to call a function inside of here with the data that we sent down from the server and we're just going to for now console dot log that information as data and again this is going to be hello world because that's what we have inside of our server.js here next inside of our index.html we actually need to require these scripts so first we're going to require our script for our socket io so we can just say script here we want to defer this and the source is just going to be set to HTTP backslash backslash again, localhost 3000, because this is where our socket IO is working. And with our library socket IO, it's going to expose a path called socket.io. And it's going to have a file in there called socket.io slash, or sorry, dot JS. And this is going to be the JavaScript file that includes this right here, this IO function. Next, we want to just include the script that we created. So we can do another script tag, defer this, and we're going to set the source equal to script.js. Just like that, close that off. And now if we inspect one of these pages over here, you'll see we get that hello world message showing up in our console. And that's because when we connected, our server went inside of the socket here. We can even just log inside of here. Whoops. Console.log. We just want to say new user. Save that. And now you can see as soon as we connect, we get this new user message. And then it's sending hello world down to our client. We're receiving that inside of our socket.on and then logging that in the console. And the reason we're getting two new user messages is just because we have two windows open, so both of these users are connecting at the same exact time. Now let's close out of that and actually work on making this a chat application where the users can communicate back and forth. Now on the client, what we want to do is we want to get our message form. So essentially every time we send a message, we want to send that to the server instead of sending it through the form here. So let's get a variable which is going to be our form. And we're just going to call this message form. And this is going to be equal to document, whoops, document dot get element by ID. And we gave that ID here of send container. So this right here, message form is going to be our form. And then we just want to add an event listener to that. So we'll say message form dot add event listener. And this is just going to be whenever we submit our form, what we want to do is we want to stop our form from submitting. So to do that, we can just say e dot prevent default. This is going to stop our page from actually posting to our server, which is also going to stop it from refreshing over here. And if we save that and click send, you'll see our page does not actually refresh, which is perfect. If we didn't do this, we would lose all of our chat messages, which we do not want. Next, after that, we want to actually get our message. So we want our message is going to be equal to here. First, we need to get our message element. So we're just going to say up here, we want to get our message input, which is equal to document, whoops, document dot get element by ID. And this is going to have an ID of message input. Now that we have that message element, we can take that message element, sorry, input, and what we want to do is just get the value from there. And then we actually want to send that value to the server. So we can just say socket, whoops, value, socket dot emit, and emit is going to just send information from the client to the server. And all we need to do is give it an event name. So we're just going to call this send chat message. And then what we want to do is send it that message, which is just the value here. And then the last thing we want to do is just take our message input and we want to set the value of that message input equal to a blank string, just so it empties out the message every time we send it. Now, if we type something in here, click send, it's going to clear it out and send it to our server, but our server is actually not handling this yet. So we need to set up our handling for that event. In order to do that, it's really straightforward. All we have to do inside of here is we just say socket.on, just like we did on the client. And we say the event, which in our case is send chat message. And then it's going to get that data that we sent with it, which in our case is just the message itself. And now inside of here, what we want to do is whatever we want. So we'll just log this for now to show that it's actually working. We're going to log the message, remove this other log. And if we save that and we send a message of hello, click send, you'll see that shows up in the console down here because we're actually receiving that on our server. But what if we want to send that down to the other client? Well, that's really easy to do. All we say is socket dot emit, I'm sorry, dot broadcast dot emit. And this is going to send that message to every single other person connected to the server, except for the person that sent the message. So it won't send it back to our original user, but it'll send it to all the other users. 
which is ideally what we want. And inside of here, we can just send chat message and we can send down that message. Let's remove this initial emit. And inside of here, we're going to inspect this console. So we have our console right here. And if we type in a message here, for example, hello, and we hit send, you'll see that gets sent down to our client over here, but it does not get sent to this client, which is perfect. We only want to get to sent to all the other clients and not the person that originally sent that message. And now that we have that hooked up, let's actually start appending these messages to our actual index file. Now we go back into our script here, and this is going to be really easy. We're going to create a function for doing this, which is just going to be called append message, and it's going to take a message. And in here, we're just going to create an element. We're just going to call it message element. And you can just do document dot create element. And we want to just create a div. So we'll just type div in here is the element that we want to create. And then we want to set the value for this. So we're just going to say message element dot inner text is going to be equal to our message. And then we just want to append that to our container. So again, up here, we can get our message container. And this message container has the idea of message container. And now down here, we can actually take that message container. So, and we can do append, which is just going to add whatever element we want, which in our case is message element. This is going to be added to the end of our container. And now we can call that append message method right here, send it in the data, which in our case is just our message. And now if we save that, send something on this server and click send, you see it's going to go over our other client and show up that message for them. Now, the next thing that we want to work on is giving our user names to display because right now nobody has a name. So in order to do this, we're going to use what's just the prompt element. So we can just say const name is going to be equal to prompt. And then we ask them, what is your name? So what is your name? And now when we save our screen, you'll see that we get our what is your name message pop up and we can type in whatever your name is. And that'll be populated into this variable name here. And now after we're done with that, we just want to append that message to our screen. So we can just append the message of you joined because we just want this to always say you when it's the person that's actually sending it. And now you can see when we type in a name over here, it's going to say you joined, which is perfect. Now we also want to send that message to our server. So we're just going to say socket.emit and we want to emit whenever we get a new user signed up and we're going to send that name along with this message. Now inside of our server over here, we want to actually catch that. So we'll say socket.on new user and this new user is going to be taking, of course, a function that's going to have the name as the data. And now we need to actually store this user information. So let's create a variable up here, which is going to be called users, and we'll just set this to an empty object. And what we want to do is we want the key of this object to be the ID of the socket. So we'll say users of socket.id, and all of these sockets have a unique ID which we can use, so that's why we can use that as the key here. We want to set that equal to the user's name. Then once that's complete, we actually want to send the message saying this person connected to the rest of our users. So we're just going to do another broadcast. We'll say socket.broadcast.emit, and we want to emit a user connected message. So we can just pass here the user's name, and now we need to handle this on our client. So let's go down to our client here, and we can just copy this essentially exactly the same. And instead of chat message, we want to say user connected. And this is going to be the name of the user instead of the data. And we want to append a message here, which is just going to say the person's name. So we can just come in here, we can say name, and we just want to say that they connected. Now save that, we can type in any name here. And if we click OK, whoops, one more time, click OK, you can see up here, it says you joined and on the other person's screen, it says that person's name connected, which is perfect. Now one thing that does happen, though, is if we send a message, it still comes across without the user's name. So we want to include the user's name in this chat message event back on our server, we can do that really easily by broadcasting here an object instead of just a single message. We want the key to be message for our first element, and then we want to use the user's name as the second element. So we can just say users socket.id, and this is going to get the name of the user with that particular ID that sent the message. And now we're sending both the message as well as the user's name that sent that message down to the server, or down to the client, I mean. And then in here, for appending our message, we have our data, and what we can do is we can first get the user's name. So we can just say data.name. And then we can get the message after that by just saying data.message. And if we save that, let's type in a name here. We'll say Jim. Whoops, do that one more time. There we go. And we can just say hi. And now you can see over here it says Jim connected and then Jim hi, which is perfect. Now we want to actually show that message on the user screen that sent it because we need to have them be able to know which messages they sent. 
And that is going to be really easy. We can just call our append message method inside of here where we actually are adding the event. And instead of using data name, we just want to say you. And we want to make sure that we append the message right here. And now get rid of this dollar sign and we save that. We can just type in here a name. And now if we send a message, click send, you see right here it says you and then your message that you sent, which is perfect. Now the very last thing we have left to handle is what happens when a user disconnects from the server. We want to send a message just like the join message, but we want it to say disconnect instead. So we're in our server, let's set that up. We can have a socket here that is going to be saying instead of new user, we want this one to say disconnect. And this disconnect is not going to take any parameters because we don't actually care who disconnects. We just care about their socket ID. And what we can do down here is we can broadcast to the users which one's disconnected. So we can say broadcast emit here. We want to send the message of user disconnected. And then inside of here, we want to send the user's name, which is just going to be users. And then socket.id. This will get the ID of the socket and the user's name is linked to that value. And then we just want to delete that user from the array of objects. So to do that, we can just say delete, whoops, delete, and we want to delete the element at this key. Now doing that is going to remove the element from the user's array here and send it down to the users saying that user disconnected. So we can handle that down here. Very similarly to how we do disk or our normal connect, we can just do disconnected. And instead of saying they connected, we can say that they disconnected. Now let's type in a name here of Jim, for example. Whoops, one more time. And okay, you can see it says Jim connected down here. And if I go over here and I actually just close out of this, you'll see we get Jim disconnected down here. Let's just go back to localhost so we can open this back up. Let's say our name is Kyle now, and we see we get Kyle connected down here. And that's all it takes to build a real-time chat application. If you want to see me build a more complex version of this project, make sure to let me know down in the comments below because I'd love to expand on it further. Also, if you enjoyed the video, make sure to check out my other videos. Those are linked over here. And subscribe to the channel for more videos just like this. Thank you very much for watching and have a good day.